That's an eight millimeter socket. Where the hell did my 10 go? That's kind of weird. Hopefully then I don't end up with extra parts. Hmm. It's amazing how something stupid can hang you up for a couple of weeks. You think you have the right stuff, but it's not. That's spinach bikes for you. Uh, short little side project here. This is a Honda Cub motor. We had to replace the kickstart shaft. They're known to break. There's two or three different ones, so you have to get one that's the right diameter. I bought a full gasket set from it for it. And of course, it wasn't right. Apparently there are several different crankcase styles with different gaskets. One is different from here, whereas this side is curved. This one is more angular, but again, while this fit my engine, it was missing this filler piece that goes in here. So I spent a couple of weeks trying to find the right gasket. See, this one doesn't fit here. And this is nice heavy material, uh, but it's sloppy here and is missing some of that, which you may not need, but I didn't like that sloppiness. So after looking at lots of pictures, we were able to get the right gasket. Now this is a aftermarket paper gasket, not so much cardboard, so it ain't perfect. But uh, that's the right gasket. So now we can seal that sucker back up. It's amazing how something stupid can hang you up for a couple of weeks. You think you have the right stuff, but it's not. That's spinach bikes for you. Whoa. That went on almost too easy. I'm not too confident about this clip. I'll show it to you. This snap ring clip. Just, I don't know if you can reuse them. It just looks sloppy to me. I have to investigate that before we button this up. But I think I got the parts and pieces figured out. I do have the dots lined up between the cam and the crank. I don't have that tightened up yet. I use this often for a lot of different things from Dorton brake calipers to all kinds of clutch things, whatever. 
Uh, that really helps. That's part number 07725-003 and another four zeros. That's a factory Honda tool. And this is too for the clutch nut and there's a locking plate there. I'm not going to get it completely tight. I'm just going to get it started. I never really liked the way this fit. There we go. It's going to have to be torqued on there too and then locked. I guess it doesn't really get torqued. You're not like you got a torque wrench on a T bar. Let's see. Is it this one? Well, at least that gasket looks like it'll fit. Oh crap! Look at this. Another wrong gasket. Must be difference in the cases here between certain years. Now I gotta hit and miss and try to find the right one. A little hard to look up these part numbers for different changes because these bikes didn't go by model year. There's actually the old gasket still on the cover. Sometimes you can get away with reusing them. I'm not, but I'm going to at least snap it back together to hold everything in place while I flip it over and uh, locate the correct gasket. We won't disturb this just in case I'm not able to locate one nice if this only goes one way. Don't like that because the ground straps in the way. So that doesn't quite fit. like that's going to be the one way. Oh, it's keyed. Look at that. Awesome. Been a while since I did one of these. Uh, I got to put all them rollers in the starter clutch. That looks like fun, huh? You're gonna press that down and get a roll of it, huh? Remember how I did that? A little tiny screwdriver. Oh, wait, there's one. <laughs> that has to be right, there's no other way it goes. <laughs> a little bit hairy. Stay away from the magnet. Let's see if we're lucky two more times. Two. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Sorry. Okay. I wonder why I took that apart in the first place. Oh, that's what you don't want. Here we go sprung. Get the spring out, start over. At least we used a tray. This thing would have fallen all over the floor, it would have been gone forever.
like it. Well, let's just see if maybe it likes it. Okay, so this is day two of our second reassembly. The first time I had some shims wrong. And then I was, after I reassembled it, got what I think was right. We were looking at the clearances here. But I was also having trouble finding neutral. Have all three gears. But wasn't sure if I had neutral. I'm pretty sure there is a neutral there. You can turn it. It's just, you have to put friction on the counter shaft. Enough friction to overcome the internal tension. There is neutral. I'm guessing maybe with oil in it and it together in the bike, neutral will click a little bit easier. So we're going to go ahead and finish this put it back together, get it in the bike, and hopefully we have everything right. If you look closely, I just in here rub no clearance on this shaft. It doesn't take much clearance, but there's none doesn't seem right to me. This is in the groove. That is in the right spot. This is aftermarket, I think. And everything's in place. And the case is on. It takes the play out of that. Because with it loose, there is end play. Zen play here. I think when it's just sitting loose and you're turning it, but when everything's in and then we get clearance. So I'm going to put the motor together and come back and revisit that. Funky clutch nut lock washer not available gonna try to straighten it and reuse it this is the nut it takes a special tool I suppose the alternative would be some kind of Loctite I don't know if other people doing that
Okay, so we got this bike. Got our little Honda Super Cub all back together. We're gonna take it out, see if it starts. First, I'll tell you a little something about it so you get an idea what we go through here at Bullpen Cycles and what other vintage motorcycle enthusiasts do day in, day out. But anyway, this came as a barn find. Dusty, grungy, flat tires, um, but a very original, complete motorcycle. And you think when you buy these, Oh, it'll be nothing to make that run again. Well, it doesn't always turn out that way, and more often than not, nowadays, as old as stuff like this, this is early to mid 60s. So, I mean, it's a good 60 years old now. Anyway, the engine was stuck. I did free it up, but it needed a piston and rings. Sent the top end out to Millennium. Had a had it bored to match my piston, did a valve job, put the top end together, hit the starter button, nothing. Starter was frozen, can't get them anymore, took that out, sent that to a, a, an Amish Mennonite old timey starter place, and, uh, they rebuilt it, took them a long time, but we got it back, starter turns, hit the button, engine doesn't turn starter clutch was bad which is just springs and rollers fix that hit the button turned over the button sticks and it still sticks so sometimes when you hit the button the starter doesn't shut off so I said okay I'll kick it so I kicked it over and the kick shaft broke and that's where we were that was about two years ago which was the last time this thing ran I would bump start it. Anyway, with that kicker, there's three different ones and there's three different diameters, just like I was showing you with that gasket set. So now the bike's all back together and I don't know if it runs. We're gonna find out. So I'll either have a, a pass or giant fail for the video. Anyway, the choke is just like an air choke. It just shuts off the air. Key on. Yes. On. We won't kick it real hard. We don't want to break it again. We'll see light. Man, I hope so.
had the gear pattern backwards. So I pulled out in third. I guess first is all the way back, shifting with your heel. That means shifting up is down if you're using your toe. One down, 147 to go.